Hello, this is Thea Newman, the director of Solar Avis. Welcome to another video on the topic of Scottish mortality figures during 2021. In this third and last update video in November, we'll be giving some perspectives on numbers and predictions. Before we start, I would just like to thank all of those who have been in touch with me by email with questions or comments. It's been really interesting and useful. I'm very glad to say that I've had two interesting communications from the United States, uh, one from a colleague in Seattle and one from a colleague in New York. So it's very heartening that the work that um, we're doing here in Scotland to understand non-COVID mortality is resonating with interests over stateside um, on the east and west coasts. Hopefully, as I said in the very first video, by different countries looking at this data, we can perhaps learn from each other and understand things a lot better. So in this video, I'm going to try to use some of the things that we've found heretofore, excuse the expression, um, to make predictions, because predictions ultimately are the stuff of science. If we can't make predictions, then really we're not doing a very good job. So I'm going to be using that very unusual and I would say somewhat extraordinary curve that we found in the last video, showing an essentially deterministic increase in the excess non-COVID deaths to make both a short-term and a long-term prediction. Also in this video towards the end, I will briefly discuss the COVID figures themselves because we haven't really talked about those very much in these videos. Let us start by very briefly highlighting the main results of the previous video. This is the, I would say, rather extraordinary graph that we produced. We're looking here at the non-COVID deaths in Scotland over this period, weeks 21 to 43, relative to the five-year average. These red points are the actual data points week by week, and the first noteworthy thing is that they are positive for that entire period. The blue line is a line of best fit, showing an upward trend, and the faint green lines are just one standard deviation, just giving you a sense of the variation of this curve. And I think the very, very surprising result that we found in the previous video was that if you do what's called a block average of this raw data, so just taking successive three-week blocks, so these three weeks, and these three weeks, and these three weeks, and so on. Do three week averaging in those blocks, you get essentially a sparser set of data which has almost no variation. This is not true in the two other possible registers in which you could do this block averaging, but in what I called register C, we seem to have a complete elimination or an almost complete elimination of the variation. We can measure that standard deviation for these three-week blocks and as I pointed out, you have a much, much larger suppression of variation than you would expect if the fluctuations were, I would say, normal. This was all the more surprising when we remember that this data for the total non-COVID excess deaths actually arises from five underlying categories of cause of death. And as I stressed in the previous video, when one looks at the block averaging for those five different categories, just to remind you very quickly, those are cancer, um, dementia, Alzheimer's, heart disease, stroke, lung disease, and then this very broad category, other. None of those five categories shows this suppression of variation. In fact, they all show what I would say is a normal, significant um, amount of variation, given that all we're doing is three-week block averaging. You wouldn't expect much suppression of fluctuations with such a modest amount of averaging. 
and indeed so these curves are sort of wandering up and down just as one would expect just with a very mild overall trend of increasing in each case but the sum of those shows almost complete suppression of fluctuation that's a really you know perplexing result i'm still scratching my head trying to understand that one can look at the essentially the areas under those curves over this period weeks 21 to 43 which corresponds to late may to the end of october one finds that the total number of non-COVID deaths in excess of the five-year average over that period is 2100 approximately and this is the breakdown of that number within those five categories most concerning of all is this category number five the let's call it the miscellaneous category diseases other than these main four and also divers other categories of death such as suicide drug overdose accident homicide and so on a very significant number and to put it into perspective over this period there were just over 1300 covid deaths and so in fact the excess of non-covid deaths in this period exceeds covid deaths by a ratio of about five to three and remember the main point of these videos is really trying to understand what's driving this because for example if this is downstream effect of lockdowns or decreased medical surveillance of serious illness and so on we see that we have to take very very seriously the significant health consequences of such actions that's a hypothesis i'm not saying that that is the underlying cause there may be other causes but we do need to look into this very urgently and understand better what's causing this very significant and increasing trend in excess deaths which are not directly caused by covid so as i summarized in the in the previous video then even though it's very perplexing that these three week block averaging removes the fluctuations pretty much entirely from the non covid deaths you know this is essentially now a deterministic curve and it can be used with caution to make some predictions possibly on what we might expect for non covid mortality in the coming months and as i indicated um a few minutes ago what we'll be looking at um is uh, first of all a sort of longer term prediction taking us up to the end of the year and after that we'll be looking at a very short term prediction so let's do that longer term prediction first so i want to extrapolate essentially this curve to the end of the year so i've replotted the curve that we were just looking at but now on an extended axis that takes us up to week 52 which of course would be the end of 2021 and we don't have um, data points beyond uh, week 43 um, we actually do have two more weeks i'll come to that shortly but for the purposes of the block averaging we don't have enough data points to make another block average so this is the data we have to hand the blue line is the line of best fit and so what we can see is that counting up the red points to date we have just over 2,000 um, deaths in excess that are non-covid and what we can do then is say okay if this trend continues there will be this amount of additional excess deaths which are not covid essentially it's the area under the curve and this is very easy to calculate um, and it gives a number which is about 1650 approximately so that's quite helpful to see with this increasing trend even though we're only talking about um, a nine week period it accounts for another 1650 deaths approximately now we could in principle do this for each of the underlying causes of death i'm not going to present that here i'm just going to look at one of them which is the miscellaneous category other because i felt that was really the most important 
One of the reasons I'm not really doing this for the causes of death is because the block averaging doesn't give a suppression of noise. I think we have to treat with more hesitation this kind of extrapolation. But let's just see what kind of numbers we would get for this particular category. It's the one that was increasing most strongly and also accounted for over half of the um, excess non-COVID deaths in the period weeks 21 to 43. So you can see the three-week block averaging here is not really suppressing the noise very much, as we would actually expect. But if we take the, the best fit line as an approximate extrapolation of this curve through to the end of the year, then on average we might expect something like this number of deaths in the category other, so a number somewhat over 600. So putting this information together in a table here, we um, have these facts. See, these are registered deaths here um, over the period weeks um, 21 to 43, uh, late May to the end of October, where the category other was accounting for just over half of the non-COVID excess deaths. And in our predictions here, we're, we're seeing another 1,600 or so total non-COVID excess deaths, of which somewhat over 600 might be due to this category other. So in total then, for the period late May through to the end of the year, this is now a prediction, not a fact, we would be looking at something like 3,750 non-COVID excess deaths over this period of which just under half would be due to this category other. And so this percentage of excess deaths um, that is due to the category other will slowly drift down to, I would say, well below half as time goes on as these other major disease categories kick in. So even though I'm giving these numbers to, you know, to, to integer precision, this is um, just because I'm, I'm mixing actual figures with predicted figures. But of course, really, one should just take these as indicative numbers, um, perhaps to within the nearest 50 or 100. But they do give you a sense of the numbers we might expect as a prediction. And it will be very interesting to compare these predictions um, in, you know, essentially nine weeks time. This number is certainly a harrowing number and is comparable essentially to the number of COVID deaths um, this year to date. Um, that's over the whole, the whole year. So again, the public health concern with these excess non-COVID deaths, um, I think numerically is of equal prominence and equal weight to the COVID deaths that we have been seeing. Um, this year and therefore needs to be addressed rather urgently. And now let's turn our attention to a short-term prediction. So we turn now to a very short-term prediction. This, um, this video is being recorded on Monday, November the 22nd and this prediction will be tested in two days time with data that will be emerging on Wednesday. So here again is the um, curve of excess, excess non-COVID deaths in the, the, the red uh, weekly data points. And of course, as you know, um, having seen this many times now, the, the purple points are the three-week blocking average in register C, which gives you this complete suppression of fluctuations. Now we do actually have two more weeks of data because this analysis was carried out a couple of weeks ago. So each Wednesday a new weekly a set of data is released by the Scottish Government and we actually do have data for weeks. Um, this would be 44 and 45. Not enough to make another three week block average but we only need one more point in order to do that. And that's really the uh, point, excuse the pun, of this short-term prediction. So what you'll see there is that those two weekly 
data points came in quite low below the um, the best fit line although we have seen this before there's quite a lot of um, variation in the raw data now if this remarkable purple curve if the remarkable elimination essentially of fluctuations continues then we would expect the ninth three-week block average point to sit right here this would be the average of weeks 44 45 and 46 and given that we know these two points and given that we can say let us predict that the three-week block average sits right on the line actually that allows us to infer what's going to happen on Wednesday so this is a, a short-term prediction you can you can work out that that week 46 point needs to be way up there quite a remarkable change is required in order to bring the average of these three points back onto the blue line although it's such a large change it's sort of interesting as sort of a motif of two below one high above this is actually a motif that was seen um, in weeks this would be 38 39 and 40 and then the um, weeks 41 through 43 were sort of sitting right on the line but then we have seen this motif before so even though this looks like a very unlikely occurrence who knows it may well because in, indeed that motif has been seen before so let's just crank the handle and do the numbers here so we have this um, new data for weeks 44 and 45 here are the numbers these are total deaths here are the um, numbers for the five-year averages of deaths for those two weeks and here are the COVID deaths and so our definition of the excess non-COVID deaths would be taking the total number of deaths, subtracting the five-year average, and subtracting the COVID deaths. So this number, subtract this, subtract this, you get this excess non-COVID deaths for week 44, and likewise for week 45. Now, for week 46, it's kind of interesting we only have one number sort of a priori which is we do know the five-year average for that week 46 there it is we obviously don't know this number and we don't know this number those will be reported in two days time however as I've indicated we can infer this number by making the prediction that the three-week block average curve continues to be essentially dead straight so in other words if the block for this three-week period continues the deterministic behavior it will sit on the best fit line and that actually tells us it must have value 168. therefore we can say that the average of this number this number and this number must be 168 and this is an equation we can solve it's just multiply both sides by 3 and then subtract these two numbers and that gives us a value of x 261 so it's kind of interesting hopefully for some folks this will be quite interesting to see how straightforward predictions can be once you have a hypothesis so our hypothesis is that for reasons that we don't fully understand this three-week block averaging is essentially free of any variation is deterministic therefore for this three-week period we essentially know what the block average is going to be and because we know that we can actually then directly infer the excess non-covid deaths for week 46 which is a number that we will not know for two more days from the Scottish government and the prediction is that it will be 261 so just to show you then back on that plot this number for the three-week block average sits on the curve on the straight line rather so it has a value 168 because we know this equation for this straight line and then that allows us to infer that week 46 there will be 261 excess 
non-COVID deaths. So what does that tell us then? Well, that allows us to go even further because now you see we actually can make a slightly more precise prediction still because now we have a prediction for this number we know this number and therefore this unknown um, number of total deaths subtracting the five-year average subtracting the unknown COVID deaths we predict will be equal to 261 and so therefore we have this equation and by adding 1139 to both sides we can get a prediction that the total deaths in week 46 subtracting the COVID deaths will be the sum of these two numbers which kind of interestingly comes out to be a very round number 1400 on the on the nose again just one of these this analysis is chock full of odd oddities little flukes I think there's nothing more to them than little flukes but it is curious so there's a short-term prediction that in two days' time, the total number of deaths minus the COVID deaths will be 1,400. Now, unless something very dramatic has happened with COVID deaths, we can see in the previous two weeks they're around 100. So this prediction then kind of tells us that, well, if the COVID deaths are around 100, it must be then that the total deaths will be around 1500 so that when you subtract one from the other you'll get 1400 so we're essentially then able to go quite a long way with this chain of inference that if this deterministic curve of three-week block averaging continues then we can infer the excess non-covid deaths we can therefore infer the figure you'd get from subtracting COVID deaths from total deaths for week 46 and from that if COVID deaths are typical you know compared to recent weeks we would expect then ar around 1500 total deaths in week 46. So it will be very very interesting to see if this is the case on Wednesday. If it is then I think it's remarkable. I think it means that this deterministic curve is somehow real. It's a curve I've been scratching my head over because I don't know why it exists. But if it's real, then okay, we can use it for predictions. If it turns out not to be the case, then what it's telling us is, okay, for 23 weeks, there was this essentially deterministic curve, but it's shifting. And we'll be seeing essentially a transition into a new phase of behavior for the excess deaths and given this number is so high if it's if the real number does not come out to be this um, i suspect it would be quite a lot lower it might mean that we're seeing actually a flattening of this increasing trend in excess non-covid mortality so however the numbers work out in two days time i think it's going to be very interesting and will tell us something worth knowing So just to summarize then, um, if the deterministic nature of these excess non-COVID deaths continues, we have a longer term prediction. We're predicting that by year's end, over the period weeks 21 to 52, when non-COVID deaths have been in excess, the total will have been in the ballpark of 3,750, which is a very significant number, you know, in the neighborhood of COVID deaths of, of this year and we would um, predict that approximately half of these would be in the death cause of death category other and as I've just explained we have this short-term prediction uh, for two days time November 24th at noon the um, the national um, data office will release week 46 numbers and we're predicting that total deaths minus COVID deaths will be around 1400 predicting that if this is true if this number is different then this is no longer true and that also tells us something interesting and that's kind of how science works you have a essentially a theoretical model of how things are working this enables you to make predictions 
if the predictions are borne out by further data, it strengthens your degree of belief in that abstract model. If the results are different to the predictions, then it means that you can essentially refine that abstract model, that it's not doing a good enough job to describe reality and you can refine it. And that's how, how a good science should be done. And we'll now round out this third update video with a brief discussion of the COVID numbers over the period weeks 21 to 43. Yes, so what about COVID? We've spent so much time looking at the non-COVID excess mortality. Um, one might even forget that there, of course, is an entirely uh, separate um, branch of mortality sadly going on, which are COVID deaths themselves. Well, let's just have a look then. So here is the curve that we've seen many times. This is the excess non-COVID deaths in Scotland over the period um, late May to the end of October. And I'm just showing it in relation to the end of the year, just to give some perspective on what we might be expecting in the next, um, you know, seven, eight, nine weeks. And what we can um, plot on the same graph is actually the COVID deaths. And, and here they are. So the green, small green points are the weekly COVID deaths. And you can see um, relatively quiet over the summer, uh, sort of a surge, which possibly related to school returning and then sort of settling down again. And just for comparison, I've also shown in register C the three week um, block averaging. It's very striking actually looking at this data that the, the COVID deaths um, are, you know, relatively smoothly connected week to week whereas the excess non-COVID deaths are, you know, quite highly, highly varying. Um, you know, one might argue that's because one's subtracting, you know, one number from another in getting these excess deaths, and that maybe sort of injects a lot more sensitivity, possibly. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting comparison, though. Um, the the block averaging shows, you know, obviously quite a similar sort of trace here of the kind of slow increase and then the rapid increase and then sort of the plateauing. Now, if you were to count up um, all of the deaths um, with the COVID trace compared to the excess deaths of non-COVID, you would get those numbers that I showed in a, in a previous slide in this presentation. Uh, basically, the sort of 2100 excess non-COVID deaths compared to about 1300 COVID deaths. So there's about a ratio of about five to three in the amount of mortality between these two, these two curves. Now what we can do, even though it doesn't look like a very sensible thing, we can just fit a straight line to these, to this COVID curve. I mean, it's not something that I would really, as a scientist, feel impelled to do because this clearly is not following a steady increasing trend. However, one can still fit a straight line to the data. And um, just to make that a bit clearer, let me just show you the um, the three week blocks just so we don't have too much stuff on the slide. And this is the best line fit to the underlying raw data. And, you know, it seems like one can't do anything with this data set without sort of being perplexed. It just seems to be the oddities keep emerging. So I was rather surprised that when I fitted a straight line to the COVID data, that um, it was parallel. <laughs> it was parallel to the to the straight line that one fits to the excess non-COVID data. And you can see that very clearly with your own eyes there, that those two lines are essentially parallel. That's really odd. Um, so let me just give you some numbers there. So the slope of the best line fit for the non-COVID excess deaths is 5.98 to, uh, you know, three significant figures. And the slope of the best line fit to the COVID data over this period is 5.91. So the 
these values differ by basically 1%. And so, you know, given that we're just fitting some raw data, these are to all intents and purposes identical. I, I don't know what to make of that. I mean, I, I'm just getting used with this investigation to just accepting perplexities, I suppose. So, so maybe this is just a curiosity. Maybe not. Maybe there's something, you know, significant to that. Um, because even though I spoke a few minutes ago of COVID deaths being sort of a separate set of mortality, it's not really separate, of course, because we we are thinking that this excess in mortality where COVID is not the cause of death is still, you know, main hypothesis is, is that it's somehow connected to responses to COVID. And those responses can come in different forms and you know, possibly there is some connection between these two data sets. Obviously, the COVID death data has more structure. It's not just a simple increasing trend, but the fact that its average rate of increase is essentially identical to the average rate of increase of the excess, excess non-COVID deaths. You know, maybe maybe that's actually something to to really think through more carefully and has some significance. Because the COVID trajectory is highly meandering, I don't feel much confidence in just extrapolating that straight line to the end of the year to predict total COVID deaths. I don't think that's really a terribly sensible thing to do, although one could. But again, because these numbers are so similar for the average rates of increase, something we need to be thinking about and monitoring over the coming weeks. Well, there we are. It seems that wherever we look in these data sets, we stumble across um, unexpected, perhaps perplexing uh, results. I'd like to think, though, that we are starting to see the wood for the trees and getting some understanding of these data to get a handle, essentially, on the counterbalance between COVID deaths per se and the significant excess non-COVID deaths, which I think for 2021 in Scotland are going to be rather similar in magnitude. It is so important that we understand the causes and the drivers of this, because if, for example, a lot of what we're seeing is due to downstream effects of actions such as lockdowns, we must have a clear understanding of this before we engage in more such, I would say, uh, strong government measures. This is particularly relevant now as we see what's happening in some European countries where governments, I think out of a measure of desperation, are broadcasting and resorting to, I would say, well, it's not for me to say, but let's say very strong measures. I really hope that we do not see such measures in Scotland or in the UK. So let's be positive. Let's use our brains and our love for each other to work together to understand this better and to take sensible, rational, sane actions that can benefit everyone in the round. And let's not be too frightened of the COVID word that we focus on that alone and miss other elephants in the room. So with that, thank you again so much for your time. I appreciate it really very, very much indeed. Always happy to receive your comments. And we'll see what happens with these predictions. I may report on the short-term prediction very soon. In any case, I look forward to meeting you again in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.